The Whistler Sliding Centre in Canada, British Columbia, has the fastest ice on the planet, and it is the venue for the opening race weekend of the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Cups. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good grief. Is it that late already? Wherever you are, thank you for joining us as we get our final day of action here underway with women's bobsleigh. I'm Martin Haven. On his way down the track in one of the four running sleds is Canada's Chris Spring. He'll be joining me in just a moment to talk us through the action, but we have got a great race in store. Last time anybody raced at the elite level on this track was in the World Championships in 2019. It has not got any easier in the intervening four seasons. Well, the start ramp is fairly short and the drop down into turn one is fairly aggressive. The build up speed very quickly as you'll hear from the wind noise immediately. Already doing 45 to 50 kilometers an hour into the first turn and then through corner two, fall away you drop about three stories down through to the first big right hander at corner four big pressure pushing the athletes down into the sled through five and then big left handed corner six setting you up for luders loop named after pierre luders the great canadian bobsledder because yeah, he had a mistake there little tap in eight into nine and here's the key key part through 10 11 the exit here sets you up for corner 12 and 12 sets you up for 50 50 corner 13 we've had a few crashes there already during the week down through the gold rush trail and a huge 4g pressure in uh, thunderbird bringing it across the line oh we have top speeds here higher than anywhere else on the planet and uh, the german athletes were saying their their pre-season warm-ups their pre-season training back home in on the German tracks so didn't prepare them for this they're doing about 20 kilometers an hour more here than they do back home and that really gets your attention we've got a couple of rookies in the field Compton Riley of the USA making her first start as a driver and Bianca Riebe as well from Canada who uh, in her first day of World Cup action in the front seat won the monobob race yesterday some of our regulars are here as well, including, of course, Kaylee Humphreys. Kaylee has won the last five World Cup races on this track. Correct, the last five, and they weren't double ups either. So she has been undefeated here in uh, the last few seasons. There's Chris Spring, having just finished his run, loading the sled, and he'll then be hightailing it down the hill to come and talk to us through uh, women's action. Well, Kim Kilicki, Cynthia Appiah, Kaylee Humphreys, Melanie Hassler, Riley Compton, the rookie, Olympic champion Lauren Alter, and Nicole Volt and, and Nicole Vogt and Bianca Riebe are our entry list. We will have more sleds joining as the season progresses, particularly as we get to Europe. But uh, the cost of freight these days has made it very punitive getting to North America. First sled and ice, brand new season of women's bobsleigh, BMW IBSF, bobsleigh and skeleton World Cup season opener here at Whistler in Canada. Martin Haven and Chris Spring watching as Kim Kalicki leads the start with Annabelle Gallander behind her. Annabelle in only her fifth World Cup race. Two of those with Kim, and one each with Mariam Yamanka and Stephanie Schneider. And Kalicki will be our rabbit. She's the one who will give us an indication of what the ice is like today. It rained all night, Thursday night into Friday. Yesterday, the track was a little bit soft and then got frosty. It was clear and cold overnight, and the ice is pretty hard right now. So we may see some uh, entertaining slides because it will be very different from the way that it felt in the final day of training two days ago. A really nice smooth exit of 12 there into 13. Beautiful crossover. This is a great run by Kim. She's really hammering it down here, taking advantage of that early ice. Wow, 147.7 kilometers an hour. Huge speed from that first sled. Smoothly onto the microphone, Chris Spring. Good morning. Yeah, she makes it look very straightforward. Of course, they do have the slight advantage that they drove the track yesterday, but they did in a monobob. And as you were saying yesterday, that's like the difference between doing the two seat sled for the men and the four seater today. So it's a very different feel to the sled. 
Yeah, these girls are going to feel a lot more stability in the sled. And you see here on the exit of seven, as she comes down, and the, st the sled is so much more stable, hugs that left wall with a nice transition into nine here. And we're probably going to see some slow-mo pictures of that transition between 12 and 13, where she had no problem. Here's the exit. See the stark contrast in how much those runners are moving, barely at all compared to the sleds yesterday that we're having trouble on the exit of 13. Well, you've just come down this morning. How is the ice feeling this morning? A little quicker than yesterday, I guess. A little, and it's a little colder. Yes, there is some snow flying in the air, but that's not really going to hamper the top speed of the track. Maybe a little bit at the start here, but definitely not that top speed as we saw there from Kim and her brake woman there with 147.7 kilometers per hour. Well, Kalicki has made 16 World Cup starts in her career, 14 medals, including winning the last race in San Moritz. Cynthia Appiah, this is her 10th World Cup start as a driver in the two-seat sled, as opposed to the monobob that she also races. But Leah Walkenden behind her, making her World Cup debut. Eight NAC races last season. And a solid start there, 5.23. And as you said, Leah's very first World Cup start here and a few taps up the top here from Cynthia, but she's definitely back on track and only 900s back and that's a credit to that start time as well and she's going to hope to reel that time in on the way down the track. Well, Cynthia in the medals yesterday in the monobob race. She also was a winner on her World Cup debut on this track as a break woman for Kaylee Humphreys. Mind you, if you've started a race with Kaylee in the last decade, you pretty much won it anyway. Yeah, and a few problems here on the way down. She's Oh, and she's tapping here. Oh, a lot of work on the exit of 13 there, but she gets away with it smoothly and at the finish line she's going to be a little bit off the pace here. Top speed is down as well and that's that's due to that exit of 13, that rocky exit of 13. You see her shaking her head there. The coaches are happy she made it down on all four. I'm sure Leah the brake woman is as well. <laughs> Just when it's all getting a little bit light there. She knew the danger though going into 13 and she was very quick to react. And a great start from these two as well. They've only just joined up this year. And as we were saying, Leah's very first World Cup start, a track and field athlete from the University of Edmonton. And she's definitely thriving in this position uh, with her very first World Cup start here today. And these two paired up for the NAC races a couple of weeks ago, took two silver medals in the women's bob race. So we see there on the exit, she's working really hard to pull that sled off of the corner. Goes a little late, or sorry, a little early into 14. And yeah, Cynthia is a little upset with that one. And the beauty of our sport is we do have a second run and there is a possibility for her to make up some time on the second run. Well, she knows she's got things to clean up and that's always good news. The only driver, as far as I'm aware now, that continues to use goggles, that's how she was taught to start by Pierre Luders. And Kaylee Humphrey still finds that that works for her. Makes her very easy to spot. Alongside her, another debutante, Emily Renner, 23 years old from Rochester, New York, a hurdler with just seven bobsled races officially under her belt. So this is the big deal. And as I said, Kaylee, in her 19th start now for Team USA, has won all of the last five World Cup races here. And she was, of course, the Olympic champion here in 2010. And what a great start here, especially like you were saying for Emily's very first World Cup start and only her seventh start in a bobsled, in a, in a bobsled race. And Kaylee's already putting together some nice smooth lines, a little bit back at the start, as we can see here in the time down the track, 800s back, but with some smooth lines that we come to expect from Kaylee, we're sure to see that time get eaten up on the way down. Well, you always say, you know, you could drive it in her sleep, but in fact, if you close your eyes, if you know the track well, you will be able to almost drive it exactly as you would in real life. 300's back. Yeah, and we see that nice transition, 12 to 13, no troubles through there. She's pulling some big speed here at the bottom. Maybe not as quick as Kim with that early fresh ice, but it's going to be close at the line. 1700's back, definitely within striking distance of that top spot for the yep. second round. Kelly has such an astonishing record on this track. And we'll see how Kaylee feels after that run. You know, usually she goes over a little bit of how she was driving down the track in her mind. She definitely likes to get a good feel for it straight after the run because unfortunately our brains, we like to forget a little bit as we enter the 
the truck and head back up the top and then the coaches are like, hey, how was your run? And a lot of the times we either focus just on the good or just on the bad. And so <laughs> Kaylee does a great job there of going over her run in her mind straight away. Well, there is video these days, of course, and uh, at the iPad programs that everybody uses are very sophisticated, but it's still not the same as what's locked in the brain. 15th World Cup start for Switzerland's Melanie Hassler. She made her debut as a brake woman. But this is her 15th as a driver. 24-year-old with 26-year-old brake woman Nadia Pasternak alongside her. Nadia in her 24th World Cup start on the brakes. And these two paired up three seasons ago, four seasons ago now, and hugely effective duo. Yeah, and the girls are going to try and get off the start block as soon as possible. We can see that snow is still flying, a little bit in the track here. And wow, 518, oh, fastest oh, oh. start of the competition so far. Beautiful start. And that's, that's largely dedicated to the athleticism of these girls and also getting off that line as quickly as possible so that groove isn't feeling, filling up with snow. Star record is a 5.06. Alana Myers-Taylor and Kerry Jones, one of the many Joneses that sat in the back of a, a Myers-Taylor sled over the years. Wow, look at the speed down the track. She's already 2,500s up. She had beautiful velocity at the start. She's very Ooh. high there in 11. She's going to have a little bit of trouble here. She needs to clean it up, and she does. Well done there at the bottom of the track here, and see how much time that scrubbed or how much speed that is scrubbed. Yep. As she comes to the finish line, only 1,400s up, and now only 200s. Ooh. Wow, very close oh, oh, oh. racing. But the way that was going until, look at the smiles there from, uh, from the coaches. The way that was going until that mistake in 10, she was 2,800s up. I mean, she was on target to be four tenths clear. <laughs> yeah, she's happy. <laughs> yeah, you can see it in her eyes. She's happy we're at the bottom on all four runners. We're going to see here where that all started. So this is the exit of 10 here. She's going really late into 11. That pressure grabs a hold of her very quickly. She's at the roof. She comes down. She's very high at the exit here. There's nowhere for her to go except that right wall, which then pushes her late into 12, getting onto that curve late. But she does a really good job of working hard and soon, as soon as she's on the corner. And that's why she doesn't have too much problems there on the exit of 13. Well. Great first run from Melanie Hassler. It's a disappointing end to last season with a, a really off-form race in Samaritz. Next up, another of our debutantes, in fact, two debutantes. Riley Compton in the front seat of the US sled and Macy Tarleton behind her. Riley, 25-year-old Marines logistics specialist, has been racing in the North America's Cup since January 2021 and Macy, her break woman, turned 27 on Sunday of this week from Atlanta, Georgia. She is a former Team USA Olympic weightlifter, 64 kilo bracket and a crossfitter as well. Yeah, and these girls are going to want to get away here quick before that snow starts falling. You can see it filling up those grooves a lot and they're already down to that 40 second time clock. So they're probably going to want to change that up if the snow keeps to fall in that second run to get off the line a little bit. Oh, I just got the handling in time. Well, this takes me back a little bit because they're not in one of the BMW sleds. They are in a Bodine. And it's been a couple of years, four or five years probably, since we've seen a Bodine in World Cup action. Actually, Macy was telling me that when they started sliding together, the sled was making so much noise. Coaches were saying, are the oh, girls she's okay? over, she's oh. over. Oh, she was so high there in the middle of six that she's going to get all that pressure at the exit. And at this point, the sled is over, the brakeman and the pilot just trying to tuck in, as make themselves as small as possible. You can hear the sound that the sled makes on its head on the way down the track. It does sound very violent. Those athletes are safe and secure, as tiny as they can be inside the sled until they make it all the way down here to the bottom where the track crew and the medics here, they're going to try and hook that sled to prevent it from going backwards. Yeah. There are the hooks. So just waiting to see how far up it comes. Do they cross the finish line? They do, they don't. Yeah, unfortunately not. Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah. oh, it might no. have been one of the track workers. The little uh, red mark there, that is the finish eye. Um, 
Yeah, and to add insult to injury, if you do crash and either one of the occupants of the sled doesn't make it all the way to the line or the sled doesn't make it all the way to the line, it's not shown as DNF, it's shown as disqualified, as if you did something illegal rather than just making a mistake. So, yeah, the, the clock stopped, but I think, as you say, the track worker went down. That will be the least of their worries, though, Chris. So here's her in six. You see she's really high. She's just touching ever so slightly on that roof there, but that sled's going to come down a little too early, and then there's going to be so much pressure in the sled at the exit, and she's going to work really hard, and she does her best to try and haul it off. But unfortunately, gravity and the physics of the track just pick that sled up and pop it on its side there. And you see here some of these pictures. They look very violent, but... I, I assure you those girls are in there as small as possible trying to keep their bodies off the ice and get to the bottom as safely as they can. Well, the good news for them is that neither of them is the tallest athlete in the field. So in, in times like these, the shorter you are, the more you can get down into the cow. Uh, so the sled being pulled back up, there's a little uh, platform there that, this, that crashed sleds can be loaded onto and then truck will back up and uh, carry them back to the top. It's a great look at the Bodine sled, that familiar lozen shape that was so successful for Team USA for so many years. The medics uh, are right there as well on the scene uh, with our athletes. And they will go into the base of the timing tower. So uh, next crew up, that's uh, Lara Nolta and Tamara Sia. Uh, five minute track hold is the standard here just to make sure that there's no real damage. And there's Marco with his uh, cap on, the engineer for these German sleds. Yeah, and those girls up next, they're just going to be staying warm, as warm as possible, making sure they still go through their pre-race routine, visualization, a couple, you know, speak to each other, a lot of positive thoughts here, and making sure that, uh, that this track hold isn't interrupting their ability to put down their best run possible. And it happens, you know, right for, I mean, and especially when you're starting at the junior levels, you know, people are, are still learning to drive, still make mistakes. So it's not an unfamiliar situation. Well, there's the bucket of slush, a bit of ice and uh, some water, and that will be spread into any big gouges or, or any large holes. A bit like plastering a wall to, uh, to cover up the imperfections. Because the last thing you need, especially lower down the track, Chris, when you're really motoring 130, 140 kilometers an hour, you don't want the sled getting into a groove and starting to steer itself. Yeah, definitely. And, and they want to make sure that the, the track is safe for everyone coming up next, right? And so they're going to slush in those grooves, slush in those imperfection, give it a quick spritz and make sure that the ice is uh, freezing as soon as possible and that's safe for the next, the next crew to come down the track here. You can see the scabbards there, normally either aluminium these days or wood, and, and they support the sled and... The runners drop into grooves there, but the, they don't drop all the way into a groove, so it protects the runners. The runners are polished to, to mirror perfection, to, to reduce the friction as much as possible. And uh, so you maneuver the sleds around in those scabbards for protection. Yeah, as we see there, some of the pictures beforehand, the snow continuing to fall. And the track crew, they're going to be up there very soon here to sweep those grooves out, make sure it's as fair a race as possible for these girls that are starting up next. And you think, well, how much can a few little flakes of snow make a difference? When you're looking at differences at the start of hundreds of seconds, of course it makes it. It's like having a puddle in your lane if you're doing 100 meters. You're only going to run through it two or three steps, but that might be the difference. Yeah, exactly. And when the races, as we've seen over the last couple of days of racing with bobsleigh and skeleton, mm. these races coming down to the hundredth of the second, where everything matters. That's why we're so meticulous with our material when we're, when we're setting up our sleds, polishing our runners, making sure that there is no stone left unturned so that when we arrive at the start line and then when we complete our race and we are either up by a hundredth or down by a hundredth, yeah. we know that we did everything possible to get those extra hundredths out of the sled. And that's, that's the imperative on the track crews at these tracks as well, is, is to make this, you know, as polished and as finer surfaces as humanly possible. And bear in mind that this is not an ice skating rink. You're not laying water down on a flat surface and freezing it. You're spraying it onto a curved ice wall. And, and a lot of these walls, they don't just stop at the vertical. They come back over the top as well. You've got to ice that because that's the running surface and you've got to make it smooth. Now, how do you stick ice upside down and make it smooth. I mean, there's an, there's an awful lot of work goes into just getting these tracks iced up to start with. 
Yeah, and the amount of work that does go into it is definitely something that I've become a lot more appreciative <laughs> of the last few weeks as I've been on the track doing the five S's, as they call it here. There's shoveling, sweeping, scraping, spritzing, and slushing. And getting used to those five S's has definitely been a steep learning curve for me. And uh, all the track workers around the world have uh, such a fine art that they create, this yeah. beautiful ice, uh, which allows us to slide down here and race at breakneck speed sometimes. Of course, the most dramatic is San Moritz, which is created from, well, from a golf course in a, and a forest every year afresh by hand, well, by big diggers in hand. But all of these artificial tracks as well, the, the concrete that they're built from, the concrete canal, has cooling pipes running through it. That's what allows the ice to freeze onto the concrete. But nevertheless, you still have to just, I mean, everything is hand formed. And because of the speeds on this track, it's really important that it, that it is done to perfection. So again, this morning, you've been down the track. Tell us what it's like. Yeah, beautiful track today, as it is most days here, even with the snow flying. We see here in the point of view, very steep start. The athletes get that sled away as fast as possible. As you mentioned earlier, 506 start record there, held by Alana Myers Taylor and Kerry Jones. As we come here into corner two, it's like you jump in an elevator and you drop a few floors suddenly. Very steep there coming into three and four where it flattens out. Very important for speed to maintain that speed through this flat section. Into six here, we saw in that last sled with Riley Compton trying to take that high line, but just a little too high, getting picked up on the end. As we come here into corner 10, very important to get an early entrance into 11 through this big two pressure corner so we can use the pressure in 12 so that that 13, 50, 50 corner doesn't give us any problems. As we come to the high speed part of the track, we're gonna be seeing sleds today, high 140s, 147.7 we saw from Kim earlier today with the fastest time thus far in the first heat. Yeah, 147.7, we might well click up to 150 by the end of this competition. And definitely the four-man sleds will be way up there. Yeah, the four-man sleds today we'll see over those 150 marks very easily. Even with the snow flying, the whole track is covered and so that snow isn't getting inside the track just here at the start. But we can see here in the distance the track workers doing their best to sweep it out as we see in these pictures here, yeah. making sure those grooves are clear for these athletes to come. Now gonna have to go back and try and recall or find what the top speed recorded by Lamin Dean's foreman was a few years ago, the fastest ever. Uh, because if I get it wrong, he will definitely let me know. <laughs> Actually, you're going to have to talk to Friedrich about that too, because uh, he topped it in 2019 at the World Championships. There we go. All right, so ready to get the race back underway. First of two heats, season opener for the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Cup. And after a crash, four rookies, Riley Compton and break woman Macy Tarleton. We are ready to go again with Lauren Alter and Tamara Sear. Now, Tamara's had an interesting career as a break woman. She started back in Sochi 2015 and then was recruited to Skeleton, Race Skeleton for a quad before coming back to bobsled as a break woman. Lauren Alter, our Olympic champion, of course, crashed out of the lead in the monobob race yesterday. Yeah, and a solid start there, 5.23, and it seems as though the snow is coming down a little bit heavier, so that's going to be something that the following athletes are going to have to be dealing with as well. 1600s back here, but uh, we know that the leader right now, Melanie Hasler, and her break woman had a little bit of trouble at the bottom, so there is time to be picking up here on the way down the track. Yeah, Laura had a really good run in the first heat of the monobob race yesterday. It was 100th ahead of Bianca Ribi, who we'll see in a few minutes from Canada. Oh, she's, she's very high. high there. She's going to have to work hard. She's pushed away. This is going to be dicey. Oh, oh. Two. Wow, she saved that one. And here she is at the bottom, only 300th behind, because we did see this very similar lines there wow. from the Swiss sled. 400th back in third place. Very lucky to get away with that one. Well, that was nearly a carbon copy of yesterday's crash in the monobob race. Exactly the same problem, exactly the same position. But this time she had a little bit more. She was ready for it. <laughs> wow, yes. See now, 
And again, they've been sat in that changing room for 10 minutes pondering, and, and that's even more time because, of course, she crashed in the second heat and didn't get to go again yesterday. This is the first run she's had since then. Yeah, so you see she's pushed away. She's high in 12. And there's only one way for that sled to go when you're that high in 12, and that's going to be into that short wall because you run out of pressure out of the sled. It falls out, it hits there, and she's going to be working really hard. Look at this. Oh, wow. She holds on by the skin of her teeth. Those runners are maxed out as much as possible. And oh, that articulation moving as much as it can where you see that sled splitting into two. And she knows it. Wow. <laughs> she knows she got away with one there. Listen, Whistler Village is a lovely place to be, but there'll be a few athletes that'll be glad to see the end of this Whistler week as they head down the sea to sky back to Vancouver and, and we move on to Park City, but wow. Okay, Nicole Vogt next up for the USA. Eighth World Cup start for her, and uh, she was 24 just three days ago. I beg your pardon, she was 35. <laughs> She's 35, this is uh, her eighth World Cup start. And uh, with Jasmine Jones behind, making her World Cup debut, sprinter from Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Yeah, and a great start there, 531, a good smooth exit out of corner one. Nicole's gonna be looking to capitalize on some you know, fast ice here today and probably put down a PB run and she's just going to be looking to have good straight parallel runs. You see she's driving the BMW sled. So we have all three Americans in three different sleds today. The BMW here with uh, Nicole and uh, we saw the Bodine in yep. the sled with Riley Compton and the BTC with Kaylee Humphreys. Yeah. She's oh. high on the exit here, very similar. She's gonna have to work hard and she does. And that's the difference there. That's why she gets away with it and comes out nice and clean there. Exit of 13, great recovery. Speed not bad either, half a second back, little more at the line, 55 unders back, 53, 4, 9 run. And you know, for Nicole, she's had some difficult times here over the last few weeks. Uh, during the North America's Cup, but she handled that perfectly, especially under this pressure and with the speeds as well. With that tap going into 12, she did exactly what she needed to do to recover and get back on track for the exit of 13. Yeah, it, that tap just sets all the alarm bells off, doesn't it? And you know, okay, I've got to get this off or we're in big trouble. Look how high she is on the exit here. She's going to be hitting early, pushed away, really late into 12. But look how hard she works. Really good to create pressure in the sled to keep it away from that wall. And then she comes to the exit of 13, hardly any steering at all, back on track, right where she needs to be. What a great recovery. You look at that exit of 13, and you can't believe that that big height came just two corners earlier. That was a massive quarterback scramble. She really rescued that. So snow continues to fall here at the Whistler Sliding Center, and we get to our final sled on ice. Yesterday's debutante and winner, Bianca Riebe. Not a bad first day at the office for the Canadian. Her debutante break woman, 24-year-old Neve Hockey, her second season. And this pair won both North America's Cup bobsled races a couple of weeks ago on this track. So is lightning going to strike twice? And today, I think anything is possible. And Neve, a hockey player from the University of Brock, or the Brock University there out in Ontario here in a 5.30 start, 1200s back. We'll see what the velocity is like here with a good exit of corner one. And like you said, World Cup winner yesterday for Bianca in the monobob, and she's going to be looking to produce some smooth lines here in the two-woman sled. It's her debut as a driver. She has made one World Cup start as a break woman for Alicia Rissling a few years ago. I saw Riss yesterday. I said, hey, what about that? She said, I called it. I was telling everybody who'd listened she was going to win it. You saw in six there, she was really high. Very similar line uh, as what the American had there in Riley, but she handled it well. And the exit of 12 here, good exit with 13, no hassles. We'll see what the top speed is be mid 145s I believe 4800s back wow 145 9 into fifth place take that that was a, a good start to her World Cup career 530 getaway that is uh, six fastest in the field fastest start for Melanie Haslia and Nadia Pasternak 518 wow lots of home support here for Bianca and Neve now this is the 
middle of six there. You see she's really high. And the difference here is that she doesn't panic as she's coming down and she doesn't try and take it off the corner too early. She releases a little pressure in the sled, then takes it off. And we see her on the exit of 13, very minimal steering, which helps her get that top speed at the bottom of the track. All right, so first heat done and dusted with uh, a degree of drama, as we always come to expect on this track. Bianca, she's having a little thought of her, uh, to herself about what did and didn't go right. But Melanie Hassler, Nadia Pasternak, boy, not only did this duo start a storm, they drove up a storm as well. Fourth out of the start shed, so maybe a fraction less snow than for some of the later runners, but if you're leading Kim Kalicki and Lara Nolter and Kaylee Humphreys on any track, you know you're doing a good job.